On your worksheet, you're asked to find the balanced molecular, ionic, and net ionic equations for each of the problems below. So in problem number one, the equation we're given is NaCl aqueous plus PbNO3 aqueous yields PbCl2 solid plus NaNO3 aqueous. Now the first step is to write the balanced molecular equation. This equation is already a molecular equation. What we need to do, however, is balance it. So all we need to do is count up the atoms on each side of the equation and put coefficients if the problem is not balanced. So going from left to right, on the reactant side, we have 1Na and we also have 1Na on the product side. Next up is Cl. We have 1Cl on the reactant side, but we have 2Cls on the product side. So to balance the CLs, we're going to need to put a coefficient of 2 in front of NaCl, and that is going to balance our CLs. However, this now changes the amount of Na's we have on the reactant side to 2. So we need to go over to our product side and put a 2 in front of NaNO3 in order to balance our Na's. So now let's go back and count and see if our reaction is balanced. We have two NAs on the reactant side and two NAs on the product side, so we're good there. We have two CLs on the reactant side and two CLs on the product side. Moving on to lead, we have one lead on the reactant side, one lead on the product side. And for our nitrates, or our NO3s, we have two NO3s on the reactant side. And because we put the coefficient of a 2 here, we also have two NO3s on the product side. So our equation is now completely balanced. If it helps you, you can put 1s in front of the compounds that don't have coefficients, but you don't have to. So the next step in the problem is to figure out the complete ionic equation for this problem. Now the complete ionic equation is simply taking these compounds and breaking them up into their ions or their strong electrolytes. So starting with NaCl, we have two Na's and each Na is a charge of plus one and you can get that from the periodic table. And each Cl, we also have two of because of the coefficient. And each Cl has a minus one charge and is also aqueous. Moving on to our lead nitrate, we only have one lead and each lead has a charge of plus two. If you're wondering where we got the charge from, remember lead is a transition metal. So to figure out the charge, we have to look at the formula. This two that's down here after nitrate means that lead would have had to have been a plus two charge in order for there to be a crisscross and there to have a nitrate with a two subscript. So that's how we know that lead was a plus two charge. Now the charge for nitrate is going to be determined the same way. Now we have two nitrates. The charge for each one of those, because there's no number after PB, we can assume that that's a 1. And so in order for there to be a 1 here, if we do backwards crisscross, nitrate would have had to have been a minus 1. Now if you didn't know that, you could have gotten the charge from your polyatomic ion sheet. Either way is okay. Next, we're going to go to the product side. Now remember, lead chloride is a solid, and solids do not dissolve in water. They're insoluble. So we're not going to break up PbCl2. We're going to leave that alone. So the only thing left to break up is our NaNO3. And we have two Na's, each with a plus one charge and we have two NO3s, each with a minus one charge. So that is our complete ionic equation. Everything that is aqueous was broken down into its ions, 
and written in aqueous form. Anything that was a solid was left alone. And so now our final step is to write our net ionic equation. Now to get our net ionic equation, we simply look at our ionic equation and we cancel out the spectator ions. Remember, spectator ions are ions that appear on both sides of the reaction. So we're gonna cancel out our Na plus ones because we have two on each side of the equation. And we're gonna cancel out our two NO3s with a minus one charge because we also have those on each side of the equation. So our net ionic equation is the only compounds that are left. So we always start with our cations first. So we're gonna start with Pb, and we had a two plus charge on that, and it was aqueous, okay? And our two Cl minus ones, which are also aqueous. That's all that's left on the reactant side. On the product side, the only thing that's left is our PbCl2, which is a solid. And that is our net ionic equation. The net ionic equation represents the reaction that occurs in order to form the precipitate. And so this should make sense. This is a synthesis reaction, and we're showing lead plus chloride gives you lead chloride solid.